Hey guys, welcome back to our segment routing traffic engineering series. In the last episode, we went ahead and did some hands on using TE as the metric type. We will continue our hands on further in this episode. We will go ahead and explore another type of way to find a path from a source to destination. And if you recall, the source we say is an head, head end or TCC in terms of the segment routing. And the destination we usually call an endpoint or a tail end, but a right terminology is tail end. Oh, uh, sorry, it's an endpoint. So, PE, so we have been using PE1 as our head end or TCC, and we have been using PE3 as our endpoint, tail end, or destination. And we went ahead and you know made some different changes. You know, we saw okay how changing the T metric affects the path calculation and that thing. So on that same line, we will go ahead and continue to create another type of a dynamic policy and we'll see how that influences the path or how do you go ahead and configure that. And if you take a look at I just did a show running segment routing traffic engineering, we don't have any kind of a policy configured as of yet on the box and we are on our router PE1 which happens to be our head end router. Again you can go ahead and run some of those previously used command that we had seen if you want to take a look at okay hey, what are my different links what are the metric on those links so we can go ahead and run the same command show MPLS you know show MPLS traffic engineering topology and it would go ahead and show you the similar thing okay hey for this particular link what is your te metric configured and what is my igp metric configured you can see your igp id uh, okay what is the level here we are running of the isis it's level two and some of the other information that you can go ahead and you know explore and i'm sure you are comfortable running uh, some of those commands already so in this episode we are going to go ahead and create our policy or a dynamic policy that will be utilizing a metric type of called hop count so let's go ahead and you know deep dive and then as we do hands on i will be keep on explaining more things to you again we'll go into the config mode and if you recall first what we need to do we need to go inside segment routing traffic engineering and the very first thing we need to do yes exactly we have to use the keyword policy followed by the policy name. So let's go ahead and give our a policy. We'll say SRT underscore policy and let's call it hop count. So we just went ahead and created a policy and we gave it that our policy name of SRT underscore policy underscore head end. And after defining a policy, as usual, the very first thing we need to go ahead and define a color. Let's go ahead and pick a numerical value this time 30. And we need to go ahead and configure our endpoint, which happens to be our destination. And in this case, we are interested in creating SRT policy from PE1 towards PE3. So in our case, the PE3, the loopback IP address is 192.168.0.7. So let's go ahead and configure that, which happens to be the IPv4 address. So now 192.168.0.7. So we just went ahead and configured on this head end a color and an endpoint. Now for a policy, yeah, we need exactly a candidate path. We can have one path or we can have multiple paths. So now let's go ahead and say, hey, candidate path. So if you recall under candidate path, we had a few things. The very first thing that we configure is the preference for a particular path. If you have multiple path, you can go ahead and configure different preferences. So in this case, we will have only one path and I'm going to go ahead and say preference of 100. Now under the preference, again, there are a couple options and if you recall, we are interested in the option that's dynamic because that's what is going to allocate the path dynamically from our head end, which happens to be the PE1 to our tail end or the end point, which happens to be PE3. So now let's go ahead and say dynamic. And under dynamic, there are a few things and one of the things that we are interested in is called the matrix which really dictates, okay, hey, the path matrix configuration. So in this case, I'll go ahead and say matrix. And under the matrix, we have a few options. And if you recall, one of the options that we are interested in is called type, yes. So which will go ahead and configure the matrix type configuration. So I'll go ahead and say type. And if I do a question mark, 
So, so far we have looked up around IGP. We have seen T. So, in this case, we are going to look at hop count. Hop count as the name says hop count matrix. So, it is going to count how many hops are there between a source and a destination. The source is your PCC or head end to your endpoint, which happens to be destination or tail end. So, it will always try to take a path where we have the minimum number of hops. So, now let us go ahead and configure that by saying type being hop count and let us go ahead and commit our changes. Once we have committed the changes, let us take a look quickly look what are the configuration now, what we just went ahead and did right now. So, I am doing show running config, segment routing, traffic engineering. And you can see, okay, hey, we went ahead and configured a policy. The name of the policy is SRT policy underscore hop count. For this policy, the color value that we are specifying is 30. And the endpoint, which happens to be our destination, has an IPv4 address 192.168.0.7, which happens to be the loopback IP address of our PE3 router. Then we are saying candidate path. We can have multiple candidate paths. For our first path, the preference is 100. And we are calculating that path dynamically. And for the path calculation, we are using a metric. And the type of that metric happens to be the hop count. Now, if everything is good, that means if we have a connectivity between PE1 to PE3, we should see our that policy should be coming up. And how do we check that policy? Yes, if you guessed by looking at the SRT database, yeah, that's where we go ahead and see our policy. To look inside the SRT database, we use the command show segment routing traffic engineering. So now let's go ahead and do the same command show segment routing traffic engineering policy. Now, if you go ahead and press enter, we are looking again inside the SRT database and that you can see the color value 30. That's what we had configured. This happens to be our endpoint. And right now, you can look, take a look at hey, the admin state for this policy is up as well as this is operationally up. That means the policy came up. And you can take a look at again our candidate path. The have preference is 100. It's a configuration means that is a configured policy and it is right now active. The name of the policy and you can see the binding set is being allocated is dynamically. This is the symbolic name for this policy. Now in this case you can see here dynamic and it's a valid and the metric type that is being used is the hop count. And the path accumulated metric in this case is 3. So if you take a look at okay from PE1 it is going to 16013 which happens to be the P3 router. From P3 router, it is going to 12, which happens to be the metric for P2. That means it is taking this path, it is going via this link, and then it is coming via this link, and it is coming to P2. From P2, it is going to 16003. That means it is taking this particular link. So that is how our policy is traversing in this direction. So PE1 goes to PE3 first on the top link, and then it takes this cross link from PE3 to reach P2, and from P2, it is going to P3. And that's what we can go ahead and take a look at. Hey, this is our binding set. And again, you know, we can go ahead and run uh, all short of those commands that we had ran earlier. Just to take a look at, I can do show IP interface brief. And now you would see that policy is showing up as an interface. And that is the IP address. And the, right now, the status for that policy is up as of right now. And again, you can go ahead and run all the previously command that we run. You can take a look at your MPLS routing table. You can dig a deeper detail about this particular binding SID and all the other commands. You know, you can go ahead and take a look at all the things. So, in this case, unfortunately, the topology we are using it is always going to be primary, like you know, three node kind of a thing because we always have equal number of nodes from PE perspective because it has a redundant path. So, it can go ahead and pick any of the path that it kind of desire. If you want really to take a longer path, then we might need to go ahead and shut off all the links. Then it, it is kind of forced towards hey, going over a longer link. And again, you can go ahead and experiment that when during your hands on. Try shutting all the links and see is PE1 taking a longer path, maybe from PE1 to P1 to P2 to P2, and then eventually to P3. So, yeah, you can go ahead and you know do that hands on in your lab. So that will be all for this particular episode. I will see you guys in the next episode. And in that episode, we will go ahead and take a look at the last type of our matrix, which is latency. And that is going to be very, very interesting. That is going to be a little bit longer lab. So we'll go ahead and spend some more time on that one. So I'll see you guys in the next episode. Thank you.